It's not a difficult thing even in a busy ED to take a little bit of that history in terms of the mental state exam or attempting a mental status examination and to get a little bit of uh, perhaps even a bit of collateral information. All of this information can not only help the registrar that may need to see the patient afterwards but also make your job as a JMO easier. mental health patients need to be treated as any other patient. You need to see them first, ideally, before you refer them to, to the psychiatry registrar or the psychiatrist or CL psychiatry. Um, you need to kind of have an assessment and um, there are lots of pathways which ED can follow and not every person who comes in with suicidal ideation or every patient who comes in with mental health issues needs to be referred to the psychiatry registrar, just like not everyone who has a broken bone has to be seen by orthopedics. I think a lot of people can be critical of ED but not realise just how just the burden of disease that ED has to deal with and the busyness of the environment. So I think that's the first thing I'd say. I think the important thing to realise is patients with psychiatric illness you can't run away from. They're, they're everywhere. They're in ICU, they're a large part in ED. So. So even if you have an interest in psych or not, these are patients that are pervasive and it's indiscriminate in who it sort of affects. So it's important to first and foremost realise that you're a doctor, you're a doctor that's seeing this patient and it's important to do your job in terms of making sure that any medical condition that's treatable, reversible, identifiable gets recognised when you see the patient. So I guess long story short, do, do a proper workup to make sure that there isn't anything medical that this patient's presenting for, because oftentimes even if they are presenting primarily for a psychiatric uh, presentation, they may have other medical health issues that warrant attention or at least recognition when they're making it through the doors of a hospital. Look, I think as a JMO and you're dealing uh, with patients with mental health histories or current symptoms, your, M your MSE is a good place to start. Use it, even if it's brief. Um, and what's your main concern? Are you feeling that this patient is depressed? Are you feeling that they're particularly anxious? Are you worried that their mood is um, very labile? Are you worried that they're psychotic? Um, and, and document it. I think if you have a clear question and a clear impression, then really that forms the basis of a good referral. If, regardless of who you refer to, if you don't do a thorough assessment, don't have a clear question or a clear impression, then referral will always be difficult. And the referrer might say, well, can you get this piece of information? Say, for example, eating disorders might be a, a common example where if you don't do a thorough assessment and you call psychiatry, well, then we might very well say, well, they perhaps might need admission in the acute medical bed. So can you calculate the BMI? Or can you do these blood tests? So to... To avoid that kind of disappointment for the EDJMO, it's important to see the registrar first because you want someone who can supervise them, get the early investigations done, the key bits of the history so that a referral can be made quickly and the patient can be seen as soon as possible. It's not a difficult thing even in a busy ED to take a little bit of that history in terms of the mental state exam or attempting a mental status examination and to get a little bit of uh, perhaps even a bit of collateral information. All of this information can not only help the registrar that may need to see the patient afterwards but also make your job as a JMO easier because you may realise this patient has suitable follow-up, has suitable support in the community and actually doesn't probably need an admission or to be reviewed by the, the registrar. It's something we do a lot when it comes to patients with um, uh, medical health issues in terms of before we refer to a cardiologist, we make sure we do an ECG, we make sure we check their previous sort of blood work and cardiology follow-up, but not really doing that when it comes to a lot of the psychiatric patients. They tend to get turfed um, to psych a bit too quickly. And that just adds more work for, for everyone. These patients spend longer than necessary in ED, 
sometimes they can get agitated and um, not really want to be there and you can't really blame them for that if they've been waiting around for hours to see a psych reg. In terms of whether to schedule or not, always go to a, a senior or um, call a psych reg and, and ask for some advice. Uh, it could be useful. Uh, in terms of whether to schedule or not, yes you can schedule in ED. Um, and certainly knowing the knowing the Mental Health Act is, is really useful. Do they have symptoms? Are they at risk? It marries up, then yes we should schedule. If you can schedule patients, please do not call a psychiatry registrar to schedule a patient. You've got to do it. And if, if a patient comes in and you think they've got mental health issues, and the patient doesn't want to see psychiatry and you can't schedule them, we can't come and do a consult. We can't force ourselves upon someone. So if you're thinking that this person needs to see psychiatry, the person's refusing, they have to be scheduled. You can't call me to schedule. When you're considering whether to schedule someone, certainly I think that's something that psychiatry can help with. And certainly we can provide phone advice if there's ever any Queries. I mean, the first port of call for a junior working in the ED is obviously to talk to their registrar, whoever's supervising them, that's the first port of call. And I mean, generally, ED registrars will know when to schedule someone or not, really. So I think seeking supervision, you know, is the first sort of port of call for any JMO, regardless of speciality. The schedule is only a temporary. Um I guess, legal uh, agreement that this patient has to remain at that place for 24 hours and they need to be reviewed uh, again for a second opinion and whether they come in under the Mental Health Act. So, uh, so before you schedule someone, always discuss with a senior. Always ask for advice, uh, whether it be your ED boss or a psych reg, then, then absolutely go that way. Um, I would say your first port of call is discussed with your senior. The psychiatry consultants are as accessible to you as to us. Um, there's no harm in giving them a call. There are always going to be tricky cases and I think that's why we're in the hospital, is to help with tricky cases, just like any specialty would. The issue is people don't feel comfortable with that, um, or people are not aware of that, which is fine. The registrar, I don't think the psychiatry registrar will actually refuse to see any patient. Most of the time they will come and see patients. But it's good to know that you can see, you can assess and um, discharge patients. For example, the John Hunter has a calm pathway, which is um, unfortunately very infrequently used. And it's good to bear in mind that um, the process is quicker if you're able to see the patient, um, come up with a discharge plan, discuss that with the consultant, and, um, and then the patient can be on their way. It's a lot quicker for everyone, easier for everyone. In terms of how to get a consult, I think you just go back to first principles. You assess the patient and you come up with a clinical question that you would like answered. So you might say, you know, I've assessed this person and I'm concerned um, about risk of suicide or perhaps um, recent weight loss for, in an eating disorder. Um, <clears throat> what would be the best way to arrange our patient follow-up? Or I don't know how to arrange your patient, uh, our patient follow-up or I don't know if an admission is required. Could you please assess them for an admission? So in the ED you are expected to schedule people and the type which ED you're in determines the type of schedule you can do. So in Maitland, probably Tamworth and any other hospital that has a mental health unit on the grounds, that's a gazetted facility so you can do a form one there. So you should be doing form ones, not 19s if they come in on a police schedule or an ambulance schedule and if you're doing the 19, you've got about 50 other doctors around so you can do the form one as well. Um, if you're at the John Hunter, that will only apply to children because there's no adult ward there. And at the MARTA, you should be doing four months if you can. Um, the biggest thing is you do need to medically clear the patient because a mental health ward is essentially 
yes, they're getting mental health treatment, but from a medical perspective, you're discharging that patient to the equivalent of the community. It is not a medical ward. The nurses do not have the practice in managing medical issues and we're not looking for medical problems if they've been cleared by ED. So you do need to physically examine the patient. If they are older, you do need to think of organic causes because most people won't have a first episode of psychosis or mania at 60 or 70 years old. They're more likely to be delirious from an infection or sick in some other way. And there is no such thing as a delusion of chest pain unless you've done an ECG. But you should be thinking of organic causes when you're examining your patient who's coming in who's really anxious or whatever, even if they have a mental health history, you should be thinking, you know, do they have other physical signs that reflect hypothyroidism or hypothyroidism? Are they intoxicated? Are they too intoxicated to be referred to PEC? And things like that. And the nurses can help, but you'll get a lot of pressure in ED to not bother examining the patient very thoroughly or talking to the patient at all before referring them to mental health. And, you know, you just gotta think of making sure the patient's medically safe.